Leslie Smith with McCormick LA Public Relations. Welcome back. I think this is our third episode. I'm trying to call it a vlog and I'm kind of feeling like it's an old term now. So we'll just call it an episode, even though this isn't really a podcast. But I'm here with a friend and colleague, Erin Sujan from Sujan Creative. And she does a lot of things in social media and videography. So I invited her today to talk to us about videography because it is the name of the game. So Erin, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Erin Sujan. Thank you for having me on. Um, I grew up in a, in a family of artists. My mom was a painter. That's hers behind me right there. Um, thanks. And my dad was an actor, writer, filmmaker, uh, and kind of in the old studio system. So I grew up in, you know, I was, I was a little set baby and, um, I, and I grew up around filmmaking and, you know, people who were artists for a living and worked for themselves. And, um, I kind of was always like, oh, I'll never do that. <laughs> I never want to do that. I just want to work for someone. I just, you know, and um, as I, my career progressed, I started shooting when I was about 21 um, professionally. So that's, that's my dog. Sorry. He's 10 months old. We're Suchan figuring mascot. Yeah, exactly. You know, he's, he's, the, he's a CEO here. He's the <laughs> executive officer in charge of Snuggles. Um, but yeah, I kind of, as I, my career progressed, I started shooting, uh, you know, grew up working with my dad in our family business and then started shooting when I was about 21 and, um, ended up working in DC for a while for government entities. And, you know, a lot of our objective there was to kind of keep the business, the big business, like Oracle and Microsoft and the Navy and, you know, things like that in DC. So they weren't going up to New York to do all of their video ad work. Oh, interesting. Um, yeah. So I got my start in that with big brands and I started producing in my mid to late twenties and then, um, decided, I, you know, I, like, I don't know why I'm here. There's no ocean here. I don't want to be here anymore. <laughs> there <laughs> so is like, a fair amount of water though, compared to is. most big cities, but it's not ocean. <laughs> no, well, you know, there's the, uh, Chesapeake Bay. Okay. Sure. Like Eastern shore of Maryland. Right? right. So I would go up there a lot, but it's, it was like three and a half hours away. So Perfect. it was a lot, it was a drive, but, um, yeah. So I came back to California and I came back for a media sales job, you know, um, and then in, in video ad work, and then eventually started working with a startup that folded yep. and here I am <laughs> started <laughs> freelancing and thought, you know, I was like, Oh, here we go back to the, back to the grind again. And then, um, and then I, quickly realized, you know, this is when constant contact was starting to advertise during the Super Bowl and stuff like that. And I was like, this is such a booming thing, this solopreneur, you know, um, world we find ourselves in this work for yourself yep. thing. And I thought, oh, okay. So, you know, it's not just, it's not just the video that could be a big deal. It's also creating content for people who own their own businesses, but, you know, aren't creating their own content. So that's sure. kind of where I decided it was a bigger idea than just me freelancing. Very good. So that leads to my first question very well. So we know that people will watch a video online when they search for something before they'll read stuff because we are an instant society and we want to see it right now. Yeah. How, and a lot of people will do this, right? We're going to do selfies. We're going to do our own little videos and get that content up there. Super easy, super cheap. Mm -hmm. So what value do you add as a videographer? Why should somebody bring a videographer in to do this stuff? I would say that there's two things. Um, well, okay. So in production, we divide it into pre-production, production, and post-production, right? Okay. So pre-production would be the writing conceptualization stage productions, the actual shooting. And then um, post is the editing. And, and, the, and you know, and people think it's just that, but it's also editing in itself, I would argue, is almost more of an art form than even writing. I mean, being able to take some of you know what's been created there and cut it into something that that is compelling and makes sense there's so much skill that goes into that sure. i would say that that's what we provide is we're providing structure and a professionalism right it's it's very much a craft in a lot of ways and 
um, as much as people kind of think, you know, oh, the creatives, we're going to bring the creatives in. It's that's true. But we also are um, very much people with, you know, there's an industry around this and there's a specific way of doing it and it's tried and tested. And that's how we do these things. You know, we have that background and, and we understand how to get the best possible result. Also, you're getting a much more professional product for a lot less money than you might be spending if you kept trying and trying to do this yourself, you know, and, yes. and messing it up and having to go back and, and redo things. And you're getting your message across a lot better to your audience. Sure. And, and I know because I follow some of your clients and stuff, and I know you've, you do a lot of things from, um, Redondo Unified and, um, other things, but you do have a fair number or in your background, you've done a lot of food and food is tricky. And I do think that's a place that really needs a professional, you know, to get the cheese to, you know, stretch just right. And the beer to look perfect in the mug, just to make the person who's watching it just salivate. And, and I do, when I watch your food Videos. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so what kind of skills have you developed from that that you think play over into everything else that you shoot or do they? Yeah, no, it does. Um, and I think it's funny, but I actually think it's the other way around. I think I have a big background in events. Okay. So used to do, I mean, in the very beginning, it was a ton of weddings, right? And then it became like higher end weddings and corporate events. And then it became shooting press conferences for the United Arab Emirates embassy in DC. And, but lot, everything, you know, a lot of live, I have a lot of experience in live events and, and producing that. And it's funny with the food because a lot of the time, um, I think in the public, Oh, you've got a pup back there too. Yeah, I think seems. in the public, we <laughs> kind of hear and see, you know, more about like, they glamorize food shoots and this, oh, you know, well, you know that they use silicone for the shininess and they use glue for the pizza strings right, and all right. that. You know, we hear all these stories. Mashed potatoes for the vanilla ice cream. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. But it's funny because in reality, if you're shooting for a mom and pop restaurant or even something that's not a mom and pop, like a fairly established chain restaurant, but a local one, um, you don't have 10 hours. You don't have all day. You have a couple hours, maybe. So a lot of it is making the food you know, it's, it's real food and you do kind of, you know, for instance, you know, glue as, uh, as cheese pulls on pizza, isn't something that you have the luxury of doing. You have to get a pizza that's fresh out of the oven. You have to understand that you have about like a minute and a half window to shoot that, or the cheese isn't going to pull anymore. Mm -hmm. So, you know, for me, it's kind of this background in doing things live and only having one shot at it that has made shooting food fun and also has kind of given me that like okay I know how to do this and now my team knows how to do that right like we know we only have a minute and a half to capture this and you got to get it right the first time mm -hmm. um and I think that's what you want in a production team you know you you want people who are on the ball and I think you really because of many for many reasons but you want people who work well under pressure good so you've made food a live event is yeah. what you're saying. Basically. And that makes or a lot of sense. Or the food forces us. Right. <laughs> right. The food has a will of its own. <laughs> right. So, and you mentioned that you only have like a minute and a half to catch that ooey gooey, yummy cheese pool there. Um, so, which begs the question of how long is long enough for a video. So, yeah. you know, the younger generations, they grew up with Vine. Remember good old Vine, the nine yes. second video and TikTok, <laughs> and they want short, you know, intermittent, really quick things. You know, yeah. certain platforms only allow you have, you know, less than 30 seconds, et cetera. But then we have, you know, like I mentioned before, you have podcasts that then get videoed like this, vlogs. <laughs> That may, Vlogs, yeah. <laughs> this will be, you know, 20 to 30 minutes when we're done, but some go on for an hour to two hours that yes. people actually do watch. So what's your recommendation for, you know, getting your message across and how do you match things or what do you recommend? So I think that's another place where we provide value that a lot of other production companies maybe don't because, we're doing the social media management, which, you know, in our business is basically distribution, right? And we're also doing the production, but we're also doing the analytics behind everything. Um, I get a little frustrated with some of these other production companies that I meet on Zoom calls or at networking events who are saying, you know, kind of touting these like, oh, well, your video should be this long. Your video should be this long. And 
just kind of spouting information to sound like they know what they're talking about, like they're an authority, right? The truth is there isn't a length. I mean, there, there isn't one particular length that's better. It depends, it completely depends on the platform. And it depends on where you're at in your relationship with your audience, which is all, it's about connection, right? That's what we always go back to. It's about how are you connecting with your people? And for, so for instance, you know, um, Facebook, you can see the drop-off rate of every video, right? So you can see what people are watching. You can see how long, and you can see the second mark at which they're scrolling away from your video. Most people have about a three second drop off rate to start, which means that everybody is watching. Oh, OK, cool. 1001, 1002, 1000. The next what you're trying to do is you're trying to lengthen the drop off rate over time. So you're trying to get to five seconds and then you're trying to get to 10 and then you're trying to get to 30. Right. If you look at your videos and analyze them, you can start to see where people drop off and why and what they actually watch, right? So if they're watching shots of fries for three seconds, but they stop watching about at the point where you introduce the salad, then you stop introducing salad as much. I know it's not the healthiest approach, but, you know, but the goal is to get people into the restaurant. Maybe then they'll order the salad. So I thought you were going to say when you start talking about math, then people drop <laughs> off. <laughs> No salad, <laughs> unless it's January, then everybody's wanting to oh, keep sure. on their New Year's resolutions and lose sure. weight. Sure, so makes not, sense. Not. <laughs> but, um, you know, and that's kind of how you figure it out. YouTube, so most of the platforms reward you for having a shorter video. Mm -hmm. And then you build an audience and you build a drop off rate from there. YouTube is different. Google through YouTube actually rewards you that they're all based on algorithms. So YouTube is going to reward you for the longer your video is, the better YouTube is going to allow you to do with that video. So if you have a drop off rate of, you know, 10 seconds, YouTube is still going to reward you if your video is two or three minutes long, as opposed to if it's. 20 seconds long. Interesting. Yeah. So it's, but it's a lot of, I think for the, your, your normal business person, it's a lot of understanding that that stuff is there and then kind of getting with someone like us who can help you navigate it. Speaking of navigating. Mm -hmm. So what a lot of people will worry about and rightly so, if I'm going to bring you in to create my sizzle reel, what should I wear? What should I count on? How should yeah. I, you know, wear my hair? Are there certain colors I should wear? Are there certain colors I shouldn't wear? Yeah. So what advice do you give in that area? Um, so there's like kind of rules of thumb, you know? So one of them is you want to stay away from loud patterns. This is like what I'm wearing right now is about probably as loud as you can get away with. Okay. Um, and then also no straight up black or straight up white. Mm -hmm. What you're wearing works because you're breaking it up, right? You've got mm -hmm. the scarf coming down and I can see detail in the white. It's also not bright white. You've mm -hmm. got a little bit of an off white thing going on. So that helps a lot. Um, the reason that they say that is for exposure. So if you were lit, depending on your skin tone, right? It's sometimes hard to figure out, no, not that kind of lit. <laughs> I saw you giggle. I'm like, oh, cocktails. <laughs> like, I could be lit. Um, but you have so to tape later for that. <laughs> <laughs> after, Leslie, after. <laughs> <laughs> depending on the strength of the lights, it, you know, having those kind of binary colors like the black or the white can kind of tend to mess with your skin tone or it can make it so that it's hard to light the, the top or your face, right? So okay. you want to be careful of that. Also, just anything that's really going to distract is, you know, you got to mm -hmm. be a little careful of. Um, I think people, I think kind of that appropriate clothing thing is a little played out, a little old school. I think that it's more about like, what's your message, you know, and how are you going to convey that message? And are you wearing something that's going to distract people from your message? And that's just kind of the thing you want to keep in your head. So huge earrings are, you know, but it, it's kind of also like, if you can pull it off, you can pull it off. And if it adds to the personality of the piece, then I say, you know, go ahead and do that. Or if it just makes you feel more comfortable and like you're having more fun on camera, then I think you should wear it. Cause that comes across. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
yeah, comfort values. <laughs> very yeah. important. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Or yeah, and sometimes I've seen videos that totally clash with the message. You yeah. know, where they're what they're wearing. I'm like, really? You're quoting Bible verses, and yet that skirt is awful short. So or the hair, not again, yes. not trying to pinpoint anybody. <laughs> right. It's just wait, what's happening? very good okay so and then this was recently you posted i on social media i think instagram that you had a client who it was so easy to work with them because they had been taping everything yeah so tell me about that what's the value of me taping things and what should i tape <laughs> <laughs> so stuff like this <laughs> sure <laughs> zoom calls even where you think that you're going to be talking about something important you know, um, mm -hmm. I know people who do say to everyone, they're like, hey, you cool if we tape this? I want to use it for content later if anything comes up. And oh, I think cool. that's pretty, you know, the reason that it's so helpful is that, um, okay, well, let me preface it by saying it can only go so far. <laughs> At some point, people get a little tired of being taped. Say hi. You want to say hi? At some point, people get a little tired of just watching a zoom we've all got a little bit of zoom fatigue mm -hmm. but for something like this where you're releasing it once or twice a month it totally works um and if that's something you have access to here's the fun thing is as soon as you have anything recorded in video or audio all of a sudden it can become a blog it be can become an animated video on instagram or youtube um it can be transcribed and used for any myriad of mm -hmm. other things later right mm -hmm. if you wanted to make a blog on a particular topic and you happen to have these recordings and you transcribe them, you could potentially get snippets from five or six different clients or different interviewees and then make a really fantastic blog off of that with all kinds of different, you know, outside links to other web, these people's websites and all kinds of stuff. So the possibilities really get bigger and your mm -hmm. SEO capabilities and kind of the production value of whatever you're trying to create gets higher if you do have backlogged content like this recorded. Okay, sure. Sure. So it's, it's content centered. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's also to me, you know, a lot of the time, and I do this, I mean, we try to, as content creators, you have to plan everything out. You have to batch it. You have to be really specific about what you're doing, right. In, in mm -hmm. order to be consistent with the message, but also just to get it done on time. Mm -hmm. um, but it is really nice when you have stuff like this, where people are just talking to each other and mm -hmm. it's real. Right. Uh, and that's what people are going to connect with better anyway, right? Is stuff right. where you're really having a conversation. It's not scripted. It's not, you know, coming off of some type of a, a an ideology. You're just talking and having a good time. It's relatable. Very good. Well, that concludes all the questions I had. Is there anything else you want to add that maybe I didn't ask, but you think everybody should know about videography? Hmm. About video in particular. Sure. <clears throat> I think just the reason that it works. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people think it's the next new thing, which it is. I think something like 60 something. No, it's higher than that. Now it's like 80% of marketing budgets they're estimating are going to be spent on video this year. Mm -hmm. But, um, the reason it works is that it's all about fight or flight. You know, it's very much like that's the science behind it is that, we still don't want to get eaten by the saber toothed tiger. So anytime anything moves, we stay on it longer. So it's really, that's why it works so well. It's kind of a shoe in, you know, it's, and people think, oh, well, it, it, it can get so complicated about production value and the, and don't get me wrong. I would love for you to come to us for the production value, but <laughs> the principle behind it is pretty simple. You know, that it's really about humans are going to look at moving objects and that's why, you know, once you understand that principle, I think where you put it and why and how you utilize it becomes much more clear because you're just, oh, okay, well, then I'm going to make it the first thing that people see on my website. They're going to see video, right? They're going to see something moving. Um, I'm going to use moving images more than I use static images, whether they're, 
graphics that move or whether they're actual human faces, I'm going to use those more in my social media feeds because that's going to engage better. So, you know, as soon as you kind of understand the basics and, and what it all really means, what does it all really mean? <laughs> what it all really means. What's it all about? You know, what's, it all, what's life all about anyway? I can't tell you that. I can tell you what videos are. <laughs> that's interesting. So I'd never heard that, that it's really, I mean, that's fight or flight is your defense mechanism. Yeah, so we watch more video as a defense mechanism. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like it's, it's fear, which maybe it's fear of missing out goes right to FOMO. Yeah. Right? We have to watch this because if we don't, we're not going to know. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Don't get eaten by the saber teeth tiger. All right. Don't very let good. something come up you don't know about. Oh, yeah. Good. Well, it was wonderful talking to you. Thank you for carving out your time. Um, we worked together on a project recently. I hope you'll bring me in for other projects that need PR. I love doing it. Um, so thank you again. And if you have any interest for for Erin, go to her website, Sue John Creative. She's also on, what is your favorite profile that people should go to? I know you're on Instagram and Facebook and LinkedIn. Uh, really the website. I would like it if people would go because our, our our portfolio is on the website. Very so good. Yes. go watch videos. <laughs> there you go. Very Thank you good. so much, Leslie. It's so much Absolutely. fun working with you.